Transforming Tragedy into Destiny, Volume 8 of the Rattled Awake series, read by Lonnie Ray. How the hell are you doing this? Danny said. In the 22 years I've worked in the field, I have never seen anything like it. Danny runs a publishing agency with a focus on training soulful nonfiction writers and offers self-publishing assistance. We share common talents as editors, ghostwriters, and book producers. Her writing coaching programs vary in length from 12 weeks to a year or longer. How are you able to conduct a writing workshop on a weekend and publish a book by the end of that week? And you do a book a month? What's your secret? <laughs> well, I wanted to answer, but couldn't put my finger on an it. She picked up a pen, readying the blank page for a download of speed publishing tips, the likes of which no one, but especially her, had ever seen before. I like to take the zip line to the finish line, I said. This tagline makes most people smile and move on. Her eyes narrowed. No smile for miles. Oh, crap, I thought. I just shared my personal philosophy, the one that has empowered over 50 writers, and she's not buying it. The awkward silence left me scrambling to fill dead air. Thoughts raced through my head. Go ahead, tell her how you do it. Was there some magic to my method or method to my magic? Being called a trailblazer is lovely. Explaining how you do it is another. What was there to say, really? Is there a good way to tell a seasoned professional that you just do it and not come off sounding pompous or arrogant? Did I have a secret? Or was it a special sauce with decades of fine tuning poured generously over the rattled awake writers? Her question made me question myself. Decades ago, after hosting a few interview shows, I made the leap and cut my teeth in creating books. The concept, interviewing books out of people, was unique for the 90s. We started bookspeak.com. It went nowhere fast. We were ahead of our time and moved on. That dot com is currently priced at $7,999. I'm laughing right now. The price tag feels like validation for a self-professed title and tagline queen. Too bad I didn't hang on to it. Anyway. Over the years, working as a nonfiction editor with a focus on inspirational self-help books, I saw two distinct problems. Oddly, they netted the same result. Procrastination killed the best of dreams for our would-be authors. It was quite literally a drag, a foot drag. And speed! Writers freaked out on how quickly their dream of having a book could come true. Ironic, isn't it? After writing and publishing my first book in five days, I knew how to take the zip line to the finish line. Idea to ISBN can happen quickly. Sadly, this scares the bejesus out of people. The idea rattles them if only because bad advice has them believing a book needs to be 50,000 words or 10 chapters to be a quote unquote real book. It's too much for them to fathom a real book in 30 days. Hot idea, but cold feet stomp out their gusto. What a shame. There are approximately 72 steps taken to write and publish a book. To the person with more money than time, it makes sense to hand over this monumental task instead of trying the DIY approach. To the new writer, who isn't yet sure if they are a decent writer, have no idea what their message is, wonder how to end it, how to open it, and what goes in the middle, it makes sense to join a collaboration. Starting small, under the <laughs> right leadership, is an easier first step. Writing a chapter or article, learning how to tell your story better, and enjoying the benefits of a collaboration versus trying it alone is a great experience, usually. I understood Danny's shock and disbelief until someone showed me the possibility. It wasn't just impossible. It wasn't even an option. Whether you think you can or you think you can, you're right. In 2022, I ventured into unknown territory, ghostwriting. I had to. 
editing work was no longer coming from the someone I, I, I counted on for years. Just leave the name out. I had to find a way to pivot, to revise in order to survive. I decided to employ my own one-liner, name it, claim it, make it so, and go for it. I didn't know if this would work out, only that it had to. Beating out over a hundred writers on Upwork, I proudly earned the job as ghostwriter for what would become known as Kickin' Karma's Ass. My client hoped the book would become a TV series someday. With a few courses in script writing under, already under my belt, I knew what mattered to make her dream a reality. Write the book in such a way that it is obvious to future script writers where episodes would end and segue into the next episode or chapter of her incredible life. Through the use of flashbacks, her story did not read like a chronological biography. The reviews say, Paige Turner. This is what you want as an author, a book, chapter by chapter, that they can't put down. It's also why chapter books, if done well, work. The reader finishes reading and reaches out to you for further engagement. Kiss, K-I-S-S. Statistically, we know that nonfiction books under 100 pages are finished 60% of the time. Those within the 200-page mark are finished approximately 30% of the time, and over 200 pages, a mere 3%. I also intended to wow my client by finish her, finishing her memoir in record time. Instead of the agency timeline of 12 to 18 months to complete the manuscript alone, four months later, she had a best-selling book that made her proud. Six months later, she met with a PR agency intending to turn her memoir into a TV series. Bingo! You need to have an angle if you want to have an edge. Did you know memoirs need to have a what's in it for me message too? Kicking Karma's ass could have easily become another sad story about cancer and loss, but that wasn't our intention. The tagline, unbelievable stories of strength, resilience, and perseverance, all told with a twist of humor was the promise we made to the readers right up front. The back cover story is equally compelling. It says, You never know how strong you are until being strong is your only option. Impossible, they said. Oh yeah, just watch, she said. In debt, brokenhearted, and battling haters while rebuilding a multi-million dollar construction business, Pat Miller showed the world how a widow can restart life without the love of her life. Refusing to be a victim of circumstances so bad they would make a nun swear, Pat is proof that anyone can prevail no matter how much crap life dumps in your lap. Told with disarming authenticity, her stories of strength, perseverance, and determination will leave you laughing and inspired to tackle karma head on, rise above the ashes, and become the person you were born to be. Creating Patty's book forced me to learn how to do all sorts of new things. Little did I know, I had become a new thing in the process too, a book producer. The ability to self-edit, ghostwrite, art direct, create marketing, and sales copy is apparently a rare find in just one person. I had no idea until a much revered industry professional said, you are what we call a book producer, Lonnie. Cynthia, a 40-year veteran ghostwriter and podcast script writing supervisor, absolutely floored me that day. There's a title for all of this? Yes, she said. And next time you do a job like that, know it really is worth $40,000. Gulp. That's a lot of dough. <laughs> Since then, I have met story developers who earn $150,000 to hang out with a person, get their vibe, and feed the details back to a team of writers. Who knew? <laughs> so, a book producer, huh? My dad always said, you never know how you look till you get your picture took. We often don't see ourselves the way others do. Understanding our value and skills that come naturally is even harder to grasp. 
but excitedly, I was on a roll. Finally, things were going to work out. And right on the heels of this great achievement, I roller skated my way into a catastrophic accident. As I write this, nearly a year has passed since I have been able to use my left hand at all. That changes things, especially for a freelance writer. What was this about, God? More like, oh God, why? I've often reflected on additional insights gained while writing Kicking Karma's Ass. I felt the need to know the difference between karma, fate, and destiny, if only because the author often said, will this shit, whatever you call it, ever end? Patty's life had more freaking tragedies than four people's lives put together. No wonder she loved the title. It's how she felt on the daily. She had to rise above it. A sad but important detail while dis was discovered while researching potential sources, such as Sadhguru, for quotes. I was initially tempted to quote from his book on karma. And then I discovered he's a member of the World Economic Forum, Forum and openly states, Christians think we need more people and I think we le need less people on earth. His photos and hugs with transhumanist Yuval Harari, the psychopath who says we don't need people or free wills, souls or free thinkers. What we need is to integrate humans with AI are disappointing at best. Advising clients of findings such as this spares them the pain of a manuscript edit down the road. It is better to know. It is better to know better so we can choose better now. Do you ever wonder if you're being subjected to fate, karma, or destiny? I sure did. I still do, actually. The hardest bit is thinking you're doomed, no matter what you call it. Oh, God, right? I'm feeling you from over here. Trust me. Truth is, there appears to be fated experiences. This one is really still a head-scratcher. All I wanted was some insight into my life— in my early 30s, I'd grown tired of trying to figure out my path. I took my birth chart to a group of six readers who poured over it for what felt like an eternity. They finally invited me back to the table to confirm their findings. Uh, we see here, the spokesman said, pointing to a spot on my chart, that you were three years old when your parents got divorced. Are we close? Close? More like spot on. How the hell are three people's futures entwined on my chart? If that doesn't make you go, hmm, what will? Karma, quote unquote karma, appears to be a result, a consequence, the effect of an action. Now, whether or not that is your action directly is the question. Regardless of the cause, the effect is what you're left to handle quote unquote, destiny is the end result of your response to what happened. One of those, what is, is what shows up, what you make of it uh, is up to you things. You know what I mean? It's one of those. It implies we have free will to decide what's what next. Do we? What, what is already faded for you? I recall a good friend calling, sobbing, ready to end her life that night. Honey, I said, I have no idea what is in the cards for your soul to experience. It, it isn't for me to say what's right or wrong for you. All I know is that I would miss you so much. The sobbing stopped. Sometimes all a person needs is to hear they matter. Reach out and touch someone to tell them they matter. It heals both people. I will share this much with you. I, too, wanted to end my life sooner than later. Trudging through quicksand was exhausting, and I was just done. Shortly after swallowing 30-plus sleeping pills, a little voice came from nowhere, pleading, Oh, you quit too soon. You quit too soon. What the fuck? Too soon according to whom? Where's the manual? Why can't I use my free will and exit this shit show? It was bad enough being at rock bottom. This really pissed me off. 
Life had been a series of almost made it moments. When was it going to be my turn? The cumulative effect of a lifelong of effort with nothing to show for it was weighing heavier than usual that night. The straw that broke the camel's back was, coincidentally, a book collaboration gone awry. It went from a dream come true to a bona fide nightmare. I paid $2,500 for the pleasure of that hellish experience and quote-unquote training. The book launch party revealed the sad fact that the woman I trusted to deliver a great book was pulling a con for cash. She had zero integrity. I discovered that far too late in the game she played. Months and months of waiting, only to receive an embarrassment of a book? The only person to see any of the hundred copies I pre-purchased was the trash man. Now, admittedly, <clears throat> there was a single moment early on where I could have backed out. Overriding my still small voice, I stayed on out of fear another chance would never happen again. Decisions made in fear don't work out so well. De decisions made in fear don't work out so well. When that whisper of a voice said, oh, you quit too soon. I knew I was standing at a crossroad. Fine, I said to whoever could hear me. On the outside chance, I'm wrong and there's more to do. Uh, well, uh, angels wake me up in the morning. I threw in, Jesus, take the wheel for good measure. That night I woke up, sat up and tried to speak to my friend. Each time the same dream. She wasn't really there, but waking up, sitting up, trying to speak, made me breathe. Instead of sleeping for days, if I lived at all, mind you, I woke up at 8 a.m. I wasn't sick, groggy, fog foggy, or hungover. Like nothing ever happened. What? Placing my feet on the floor, I said, okay, fine. Now what? And this better be good. Little did I know that someday I would be holding weekend writing workshops, helping others find their message, express their passion, create their legacy, and launch careers. I never, ever imagined being a publisher or series creator. I used to help multinational brands with commemorative merch you know, merchandise, but, but directly helping everyday people make a name for themselves is so much better. Is this destiny? <laughs> it sure has a strange way of showing up. If your hand is being forced in a new direction, ask for signs and keep going. Something bigger than you is nudging the ship. Reciting, I am divinely guided, connected, and protected helps a lot. Delight in your own power to transform. Ever notice how if you make a list before you go to bed in the morning, you get up and get going? It sets your mind and your body follows. This plaque hangs on my wall. I hope you will note it before bedtime tonight and feed your soul with these words of truth and encouragement. Note to self, take pride in how far you have come and have faith in how far you will go. The Secrets in the Sauce Writing an article slash chapter in two days is not unrealistic. I, I just never thought about it. Never had a reason to, frankly. Then I had to. As soon as a need, as soon as a need arises, so does its solution. Keep that in mind. All it takes is one new idea to change everything. Prior to that life-changing fall, being a lone wolf writer was just fine. And then it wasn't. We aren't done, and maybe the best is yet to come. At 60 years young, I'm telling you tomorrow is yet unsung. And while you might feel defeated for a hot minute, it might be you get to sing an even better tune real soon. There was no peel and reveal formula for Danny, the publisher. I just love what I'm doing. Have a knack for bringing the best out of people. No story development and work really long days to get our book published in record time. Like I said, we take the zip line to the finish line. 
It's amazing what you can do when you don't know you can't. Holding the space for others to unite and collaborate has a spectacular and natural end result. It is a win-win-win all over the place. The special sauce is intention. Wrapped in delicious layers of strategy, support, and spirit, held firmly together by knowing full well that the impact we are having is worth a weekend of work. These past five years have held multiple rattled awake events, epiphanies, pivots, and swan dives for all of us. Sharing these short stories is how we collectively advance toward the goal of becoming better, not bitter. It is all about the who that is you behind the what that you do, and then your special sauce. What's your story? This springboard phrase will launch you into a realization and a revelation worth sharing. I had to find a way to blank because blank was making me blank. Believe it or not, this simple exercise reveals your pivotal event, rattled awake story. Try it. I had to find a way to blank because blank was making me blank. Rattled Awake Volume 7 co-author Elizabeth Foster's response blew us all away. She said, I had to find a way to leave you because staying was killing me. That was literally true for her. She went on. The turmoil of that realization was overwhelming because the love I held for him eclipsed the love I had for myself. Yet deep down, I understood that I had to prioritize my own well-being as loving him was slowly suffocating me. Wow. From volume eight, co-author Ashish Thomas, who writes The Right Way, he shares why he wrote and self-published his observations. He said, I had to find a way to compile these excerpts into a book because if I can't do it for myself, then who else can? He wrote a couple books and published on his own. What did you feel compelled to do? I had to find a way to reach more of you in a secondary format because these stories improve lives. Audios of my chapters can be found on YouTube in the Rattled Awake playlist at Rattled Awake Books on YouTube. So I've covered a few of the chapters. Um, are you a seeker or a beaker? I had to find a way to demonstrate how children are used for political gain. <laughs> yes, how low will they go next? In the art of traveling light, I had to find a way to show you what the big yes looks like because it will change your life. In volume two, I had to find a way to share news about food processing plants burning down because keeping quiet was against my moral compass. I believe in saying it forward. I also wrote a chapter called This Bugs Me. I had to find a way to tell you that Bill Gates's nasty creation appeal is being sprayed on our produce, including organic, because it's really toxic. And yeah, it made me mad. <laughs> and I had to find a way to show you there are better news sources for real news than lamestream media. In peace of mind, I had to find a way to help you be prepared for emergencies because I saw what happened to residents who had to start life over barefoot in their pajamas. Whether it's a weather event or an accident, being ready to roll in under three minutes is essential. This is how you can do it and sleep better at night. I had to find a way to raise the voices of everyday people because their stories change lives. To not try my level best to do this was making me feel like I didn't give, my, give it my all at least one more time. I had to find a way to make it easy for everyone to feel heard and make a difference because there's a need for it now more than ever. This is why Rattled Awake came into being. There are so many different stories. The thread which binds them together is this. Over the last five years, what single incident caused you to change your perspective? How did you pivot and become better, not bitter? How did you find a way to and through something? over the last five years. A lack action alleviates anxiety. Where there's a will, there's a way. There is so much you can do. 
Taking a stand in your life, speaking up or out, empowers others far beyond your imagination. Case in point, co-author George Monty became a stand-up guy at UPS. Read his story of revelation and action. I promise it will invigorate you too. In Bend, Don't Break, Rattled Awake, Volume 3. Oh, we've all been through a lot. Let us link arms and support each other's voices being raised, our ahas being valued, and our steps toward improving life actioned. From now on, forevermore. All ships rise with the tide. Fortune favors the bold. What rattled you? And what do you have to say about it? Your story matters. You matter and you have lived to tell about it, literally. Lonnie Ray, that's the end, is a professional tumbleweed who has lived to tell about it, literally. Embracing variety as the spice of life and embodying her childhood hero, Pippi Longstocking, her life has been an adventure into unknown territories. Reinventing herself from the inside out, she has returned with a lantern and a laugh to shine the light on the path for others who want to rewrite their next chapter. She has helped countless authors create books they are proud of and is especially proud to have been edit editor of the Indie Book of the Year in 2023. Her books, Life Lessons Learned from a Lousy Mother and How to Deal with a Dumbass, What to Do and Say When They Come Your Way, along with her ninth podcast, How to Deal with a Dumbass, A Spiritual Perspective, have helped others feel lighter, laugh more, and live out loud. Lonnie's transformational writing workshops convert nervous Nellies into confident writers, speakers, and podcast guests. A 13-time international best-selling writer and ghostwriter, Lonnie's always on the lookout for people who want to join the movement that is Rattled Awake, so they can finally feel heard too. Please visit Official Rattled Awake for workshop information or to discuss making your book idea a reality.